Okay, this video is gonna, going to go along with the Shang Dynasty notes. Um, so you can get started and you can open up your China notes documents. You can pause this video at any time and then hit play when you get to where you need to be. So when your China Notes document is open, the first thing that you see is the Shang Dynasty. Now that's pr pronounced Shang, not Shang. Shang as if you're hitting a gong, Shang. The Shang Dynasty was China's first dynasty. Remember, a dynasty is a king and his family members who are all ruling for a time. Um, and this dynasty developed along the banks of the Huanghe, Huanghe, not Huanghe, Huanghe River. And if you were to draw a line as to where that would be, it would be right about here. Um, so we know that lots of ancient civilizations will develop next to rivers because that is the best farmland for them. The Shang Dynasty had a very strong army. Uh, with this strong army, they had constant warfare. And this constant warfare was to maintain the rule and expand their boundaries. Um, with their army, they use bronze weapons. We know that whoever has the best weapons is going to be the most successful. Um, these bronze weapons were made out of a mixture of copper and tin, and they were stronger than other weapons from other places. Now this picture right here, I think it's also in our textbook as well. Um, we see that they are, no, they're not digging a basement. They are, um, they have different horses which are lying down. They have people who are deliberately placed. They are burying um, slaves, servants, and animals, and riches. And this proves to us that they did believe in an afterlife. This bottom area here, you can see the walls are decorated, and that's going to be the place where the king would be placed. So servants, animals, and slaves were buried with the king because he needed to be served in the afterlife. The Shang traded a lot, and they actually used race, rare seashells as their type of money. Um, so you have a picture in the bottom right-hand corner of those rare seashells that they would use. Later, they will develop a type of money that's made out of actual metal, um, and the money will have holes in the center so that you can wear it almost as like on a string and then tie it into a bracelet or a necklace and then carry that sum of money about. The nobles are the people who owned all the land, but of course the farmers had to send their harvest to the nobles. The farmers are doing the work. The nobles get to sit back, relax, and take in all of the wealth. Um, slaves were prisoners of war, which is something that we've seen before in other societies, and they built the tombs and the palaces for the king. As for the religion, we know that they believed in an afterlife because of the food and riches that we found buried with the king. You saw that in the last picture that we had where they were burying the horses and the slaves alongside the king. Um, so they must have believed that your soul entered into some place. Um, a big part of their religion is also going to be ancestor worship. They believe that their dead ancestors could help or hurt the living. Um, and because of that, they made offerings of food or even humans to keep the ancestors happy. Um, the offering of the humans, uh, they're not the only ancient society to do this. Um, the uh, Aztecs and uh, the Inca, they also sacrificed humans as well. Um, a little brutal. <laughs> to do that. But hey, got to keep those ancestors happy. The picture that I chose is actually a modern picture of offerings left out in honor of the ancestors. So this is something that is still done today in China. And they believe that the king inherited that right to rule from his ancestors. Um, so speaking of ancestor worship, we have a clip from Mulan. And in this clip from Mulan, um, they have just learned that Mulan has left in order to fight for her father. So they're calling upon the ancestors to awaken and help. Thank you. 
good hand, sister. You just say the word and I'm there. Who's you? And let me say something. Anybody who's foolish enough to threaten our family, vengeance will be mine. Who's you? These are the kind of guns. They protect the family. And you? I wanted to ask you what um, we could learn about Chinese society based on this video clip and some of your answers should be um, how it was very important to keep your ancestors happy. They mentioned, um, you know, not all of our ancestors could become great acupuncturists. Um, so that was what's kind of saying that the ancestors were a little upset. They're upset that she's become a cross dresser, they said, by being a woman who's dressing as a man. So this shows you how the, the ancestors are looking after the people and then how also they need, um, the people need to keep the ancestors happy. Okay, and as for our religion, um, we have oracle bones, which are going to be used to communicate with the ancestors. Uh, these oracle bones are going to be made from turtle shells or cow bone. Um, so they're taking a big part of an animal. And uh, the people would make little scratches on the oracle bone. And these scratches would eventually develop into the writing system that um, the Chinese still use today. So you can see that in our picture over here, um, that eventually the scratches develop into what would become pictographs and then become more advanced to become the writing system. Um, the priest would ask the ancestors a question. Um, the question might say, um, is the uh, queen going to have a male baby? Because male babies were always more desirable than female babies. Or um, are, is our enemy going to attack us? Um, when will the Huanghao River be flooding? Um, these questions that the ancestors could answer for them. The uh, Priest would then take a metal rod and put it into a fire. The metal rod would heat up. When he placed the metal rod onto the shell, the shell would then crack. And as the shell would crack, he would then be able to interpret what the um, ancestors were saying. Now, obviously, you can think of that, what? You know, how can a crack say what the ancestors are saying? I don't know, but this is what the ancient society believed, so we have to go with that. Okay, and as for the writing, it began on those oracle bones. Um, they use pictographs, and pictographs are kind of similar to the Egyptian hieroglyphics. They're symbols that stand for words, not for sounds. Um, we have an alphabet where we have a symbol that represents a sound, and we put those sounds together to form words. In China today, they still use pictographs, so they have a symbol to represent an entire word. So I guess it's a lot easier to learn English than it would be to learn Mandarin or Cantonese. 
Um, the spoken language is varied throughout China, even still today, and depending on where you are, but the written language is going to be the same for all of China. And China is a very large country. We said one fifth of the world's overall population is from there. So this, um, having the same written language helped to unify a large and diverse area. So people in China, they could um, send an email to each other and anybody in China would be able to understand it. But as far as being on the telephone with each other, some people wouldn't um, understand somebody else because they might be speaking a different dialect. Um, Mandarin and Cantonese are two of those dialects. Um, as for the artwork of the Shang Dynasty, they made vases out of bronze. Remember, that was also the material that they used for the weapons. And just like in our picture, we can see that those vases have very delicate and in intricate details. They also made um, jade jewelry. Jade is still used today. Um, in China, a lot of Chinese women wear um, jade bracelets around, um, almost like a bangle bracelet around their wrist. Um, jade is a green stone. It's kind of like a milky green stone, like a shamrock shake from McDonald's around St. Patrick's Day. Um, the jade's hard quality represents the wisdom, but the smooth and shiny side of it also represents kindness. So you can be wise and kind at the same time. So the Shang Dynasty is going to come to an end. We're gonna have constant warfare, weakened of the military power. There was also very lavish spending that was happening on the king's part and that's going to weaken the economy. And the king is going to be seen as being very corrupt. Um, it's at this point in time that the neighboring state of the Zhou Dynasty will come in and conquer them. But the Zhou Dynasty is tomorrow's blessing. So now you can go ahead and take the Socrative quiz to show what you learned today. And feel free to go back and rewatch this video at any time. Uh, have a great day.